Hello again, my name is Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit educational Break the Cycle website, which is eight self improvement lessons I've learned from 31 years of being a family therapist. During that time, I specialized in learning about step families. This video is one of a series of videos I'm wanting to pass on to you to tell you what I've learned in those 31 years about how to create and maintain a high nurturance, meaning functional or successful, step family. Most American step families fail. They do not know what I'm trying to offer you in these videos and in the related lesson, Lesson 7, in my website at sfhelp.org. A complex question that many people grope to answer without enough information is, what does it take to be an effective or successful stepfather or stepmother, stepparent? What does it take? I want to offer you what I've learned over 31 years of trying to answer that question, listening to well over a thousand people tell me their opinions. By the way, notice that step-parent is not a person. Step parent is a role, like baker, airline pilot, housewife, gardener, plumber. Step parent is a job. It's a set of responsibilities. Okay? So to say somebody is a bad step parent does not mean they're a bad person. It means they haven't been trained to do this very complex, demanding job. Keep that in mind. Step parents, as you know, like bio parents, biological parents, range in their job from highly effective to highly ineffective. How can you tell what is an effective step parent? How can you tell? They must fill three conditions, in my judgment. Over a period of years, they need to help consistently help their stepchildren and their own, if they have children, to fill developmental and adjustment needs. They need to fill their own needs while they're doing this. And they need to maintain or grow a healthy primary relationship. They need to do all three of these things consistently over many years. Those are the goals. What does it take to reach these goals? Here's a group of things. The very first thing that you need to be an effective step parent, in my very biased opinion, is you need to have your life guided by your wise, true self. If you don't know what that means, study lesson one in my website and the related videos. My observation over many years is most people, most adults in step families are ruled by a quote, false self. They're psychologically wounded from traumas in their early childhood. This affects all their relationships, their self-esteem, and they, without knowing it, they pass these wounds on to their kids. So effective step-parents need to have their true selves in charge most of the time. See lesson one to find out if your true self is running your life or not. If it's not, find out what to do about it. The second requisite that effective step parents need to fill is to have made three wise adult primary relationship commitment choices. Do you know what they are? If you can't name them, you may not have made them. What I'm referring to is when you decide to take on the role of step parent and mate, you need to choose the right people to commit to, adults and children, at the right time for the right reasons. It's a very complex subject. Most people are not this methodical about deciding, I do, again. See my videos, there are two of them, on making three wise marital or commitment choices. That's the second requisite to be an effective step parent. The third major requisite that I propose is to be an effective stepfather or mother you need to want to learn. If you think, because you're in your 30s or 40s or 50s, 
that your life experience and your prior learning is enough to co-create a healthy step family and be successful as a step parent, you're wrong. Guarantee it. Talk to veteran step parents, see if I'm right. You need to want to learn a whole lot of important information. I propose, and I'll do it later again, that you study lessons one through seven. If that's too much work or you don't have time, at least study lesson seven. It's all about step families. You need to know what's in there to be an effective step parent. You need to want to learn, is my point. Another requisite is over some months or years, effective step parents are motivated to get clear on what am I responsible for? That in my job, my role as stepfather or mother, what am I responsible for? There are two sets of answers. The first is your own. This is what I hold myself to be responsible for with my stepchildren. That's one answer. The other answer is, what do all the kids and adults in my step family, and there can be scores of them, what do the other members of my step family hold me to be responsible for? It takes a long time to find that out. Often the other members of your family don't know. So you all learn together, but it will help you be effective over the years in many complex situations. Get clear on what you're responsible for. If you want to see the example of a stepfather's job description, see Lesson 7 in my website. It's very educational. Another requisite effective step parents need to forge is they need to be clear on their priorities. My experience with hundreds of bio parents and step parents and struggling to make do and often having high stress. They're not clear on what their priorities or they're conflictual about them. After 31 years, my conclusion is this, the best priorities that all adults in a step family, not just step parents, need to forge and guide, guide their lives by. Put your personal integrity first before anything. Be true to yourself. Put your holistic health alongside of that, mental, physical, spiritual health, then your primary relationship, then everything else. The rationale for that is doing that priority Adopting that priority scheme protects all your kids from future uh, stress and re-divorce. It's a protection. Use this priority scheme except in emergencies. Typical effective step parents make an effort to find out what do my stepchildren and bio children, if you have some, what do they need? My job is to help fill their needs. What do they need? Minor kids and step families have a whole group, almost 30, of normal developmental needs as they age. <clears throat> In addition, typical minor stepchildren have um, 12 to 20 or 25 more needs as they adapt to parental death or divorce, parental remarriage, learning lots of new roles and possibly geographic moves. So find out and define and discuss with your other adults what do my stepchildren need. You can't figure out your job until you know what the kids need. So I presented that backwards here. Learn the needs, then clarify your role, your job your responsibilities. A fundamental, essential requisite to be an effective step parent or bio parent or grandparent is to learn how to use seven specific effective communication skills. My long experience with hundreds and hundreds of people, women and men from all walks of life, all ages, all backgrounds, college educated, not my high experience is, I would say less than 5% of typical adults know how to 
communicate effectively. Their schools and their ancestors never taught them how to do it. They don't know what they need to know, so they're content with ineffective communication. Communication in any family is vital. In step families, it is essential. Another requisite that is uh, found in successful step parents, as judged by themselves and others, is they're motivated to grow and maintain a cordial or cooperative relationship with their stepchild's other parent, if she or he is living. A frequent source of stress in many step families is tension and stress between divorced parents and and or between a step parent and their child's other parent. There are nine potential stressors between the other parent and a step parent's household, whether it's custodial or non-custodial. So an effective step parent and their mate works hard to identify what are these nine stressors and what can they do to reduce their half of them. To find out what the stressors are, see Lesson 7 in my website at sfhelp.org and see the related video here um, in Lesson 4 about how to improve relations with an ex-spouse, especially in a step family. Uh, in addition to what I've covered here, to be an effective step parent, you need to have a really sturdy sense of humor, you need to have a great deal of patience, you need to have high self-esteem, you need to love your partner dearly and have a long-range view, and you need to have an open mind, the open curious mind of a student. It's a lot, isn't it? Let me recap. My opinion, after 31 years of studying stepfamilies and my own experience as a stepfather, to be successful at the complex role in our society of step-parent, there's no help for it. There's very little instruction for it. You've got to invent it as you go. You need to be guided by your true self. You need to make three wise commitment choices in selecting a new partner at the right time at the right, for the right reasons. You need to accept your stepfamily identity and work at learning what that means. Often it means converting up to 60 myths into realities. You need to learn lessons one through seven in my website. You need to be clear on what your stepchildren need, their normal developmental needs and special adjustment needs. You need to work at evolving clarity on what is your job, your role as stepfather or stepmother. What are you responsible for? That's a requisite to want to get clear on that. And you need to want to learn and use all seven skills that will help you communicate effectively with everybody in your step family, not just your kids. Okay? You need to uh, strive to stabilize and improve the relationship with your partner's ex-mate. This is a lot. You can understand why many step parents feel overwhelmed and confused and why their mates do too. The point of this entire video is if you're considering being a step parent or you already are or you know somebody who is, study lessons one through seven. If that's too much, study lesson seven in these videos. Good luck.